So yesterday was the NBA trade deadline. So many game-changing trades happened. So in today's video, I'll be discussing all the major trades in this year's NBA trade deadline. Before we get into the video, I ask you to drop a like on this video to help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel if you want weekly NBA videos and to help me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers. And comment on this video to start a conversation with me as I respond to all of my comments. And play that intro. So the first trade I will discuss is Nikola Vucevic to the Chicago Bulls. The entire move included Wendell Carter Jr., Otto Porter Jr., and two future first round picks to the Magic, and Nikola Vucevic and Afru Kaminu to the Chicago Bulls. And in my opinion, the Bulls easily won this trade, as they got an all-star in Nikola Vucevic to pair with Zach Levine. And the most important thing they gave up was Wendell Carter Jr., who yes, he does have a lot of potential, but he probably will never be as good as Nikola Vucevic. This move proves that the Bulls aren't a rebuilding team anymore, and I think this move makes the Bulls significantly better, and I think this will push them to be a playoff team this season and in the future. For Orlando, I don't think this is the worst return you could get for Vucevic since they did get Wendell Carter Jr. who has the potential to be a top 10 center in the league as he's a good defender and paint scorer. The Magic also got two for future first round picks which I think could place anywhere from the 10th pick all the way to the 25th pick. And they definitely could get some solid players with those draft picks and potentially an all-star. And Porter was just clearly in this move to make the money work. So I don't think he matters much. But as I said, I think it's clear the Bulls won this trade, but Orlando didn't do terrible in this move. The next trade I will discuss is Evan Fournier to the Boston Celtics. The full move is Evan Fournier to the Celtics and two second round picks to the Magic. And I think this is a very good move for the Celtics since they obviously had to use their huge trade exception and using it on a 20 points per game score who is a very good shooter and can play off the ball as well as create his own shot is a good move. Fournier is a great player who can really help the Celtics offense against teams like the Brooklyn Nets and Philadelphia 76ers. So I think this is a fantastic move and they definitely improved. For the Magic, I thought they could get a bit more for him, but two second round picks isn't enough for a 20 points per game score. So they took, they took an L in this trade for sure. The next move I will discuss is Aaron Gordon to the Denver Nuggets. The full move was Gary Harris, RJ Hampton, and Denver's 2025 first round pick all the way to the Magic, and Aaron Gordon and Gary Clark to the Nuggets. I think this was a good move for the Nuggets since Aaron could help them out a lot on defense as he can guard a lot of forwards. Gordon also can space the floor as he's been shooting 37% from 3 this season. I feel like Gordon can fit perfectly in Denver's offense as he's very athletic and Jokic can hook him up with plenty of dimes to the rim. Giving up Gary Harris isn't a big deal since offensively he has really struggled this season and, in, and a 2025 first round Denver pick isn't a big deal since Denver is going to be in the playoffs every season for a long time. For the Magic, I think this is a really good return for Gordon as RJ Hampton is a young player with a lot of potential, Gary Harris is a solid player, and getting a first round pick is always solid, especially since they're going into a rebuild. The next trade I will discuss is Victor Oladipo to the Miami Heat. The full trade is Avery Bradley, Kelly Olynyk, and a 2022 first round pick swap to the Rockets and Victor Oladipo to the Miami Heat. This is an absolutely terrific move for the Heat as they got a 20 points per game score in Oladipo who has been inefficient this season but I think on a better team like the Heat he'll get easier shots. Oladipo gives them more offense and another shot creator to face the Brooklyn Nets. Oladipo is also a very good defender so I think this really helps them. It's scary that they only had to give up two average role players and a draft swap. For Houston, this is an absolutely terrible move as Oladipo 
Oladipo was a big part of the James Harden trade and you traded him for two average role players who you probably will have to buy out this year. Absolutely none of these assets will help you in your future. So this is just an absolute L. Miami clearly won this trade and it's not even close. The next trade I will discuss is Norman Powell to the Portland Trailblazers. The full trade is Rodney Hood and Gary Trent Jr. to the Raptors and Norman Powell to the Blazers. And in my opinion, this is a pretty even trade as the Blazers are getting a 20 points per game scorer who can play off the ball and defend in Norman Powell who I think will be their X factor against the best teams in the West. And the Raptors got Gary Trent Jr. who as a starter averaged 18 points while being a fantastic shooter. He also was only 23 so he has a lot of room to improve. Toronto also got Rodney Hood who's a solid role and bench player so I think this is a pretty fair trade. The next move that I will discuss is Lou Williams to the Atlanta Hawks. The full trade is Rajon Rondo to the Clippers and Lou Williams and two future second round picks to the Hawks. And I think this trade really makes sense for the Hawks and it makes them way more dangerous since they are adding a guy who can go off for 20 points and a guy who can run the second unit's offense. They also got two second round picks that they can use in future moves. Lou Will will bring a veteran leadership to this young Hawks team and it will be big big help in their younger players especially Trey Young. For the Clippers this is also a good move since they got the playmaker that they need and Rondo can be their leader and he could have some big games for them in the playoffs like he did for the Lakers. So I think this is an even trade but I give the slight edge to the Hawks since they did get two second rounders for Rondo and Rondo has been really injury prone this season so that's a potential scare for the Clippers but overall pretty good trade for both sides. The next trade that I will discuss is JJ Reddick to the Dallas Mavericks. The full trade is JJ and Nicola Melli to Dallas and James Johnson, Wesley Owundu and a second round pick to the Pelicans. And this is a move that will just give the Mavs more floor spacing and it gives Luka more help on offense. The Pelicans didn't really get anything significant but it's fine. The Mavs got better from this trade while the Pelicans didn't get better, but they didn't necessarily lose this move and this is just an okay move, not really much to say. The last move that I will discuss hasn't really been discussed that much and this move is Terrence Davis to the Sacramento Kings and the full move is Terrence Davis to the Kings and one future second rounder to the Raptors and this is a fantastic move for the Kings as they get a young player who I think could be a really good 3 and D player. People forget that he made second team all rookie last season so he can be really good. This doesn't make that much sense for Toronto since most likely whoever they select with that second round pick won't ever be better than Terrence Terrence Davis, but Masai is one of the best GMs in the league, so maybe he has a plan or something. Nonetheless, terrific move for Sacramento. Anyways guys, that's it for the video. Let me know what you thought about the trade deadline. Drop a like on this video to help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel if you want weekly NBA videos and to help me reach my goal of 1000 subscribers. And comment on this video to start a conversation as I respond to all of my comments. And I'm out.